Hello everyone, my name is Max Kravchenko. I've compiled a series of lessons on animating the NASA logo from the Logo Animation Project for you. In them, I'll show you how to combine 3D and 2D animation techniques together, as well as share other interesting gimmicks I've used to create this shot. In the previous lesson, we have created a 3D model of a UFO, animated it, and transferred it into After Effects. In this video, I'll show you how I have created this part of the logo animation. Let's get started. First, let's create a trail and then create the distortion effect for the galaxy based on it. Initially, I've created the trail using the 3D Stroke plugin. But then, a miracle has happened and taper has been added to the standard stroke after billions of years of evolution. Wow! Who knows, maybe after a few hundred years, After Effects won't take up all the available RAM, will be able to quickly render and will not crash. OK. Since the taper feature has been added in the latest update, I will create a trail using the standard tools. Create a path for the trail. In my case, this path is the most optimal. Select the pen tool. The beginning of the path will be approximately at this point. Here, the UFO will be substituted with the trail. Create the entire path, it will be linear initially. Then, add points to round the edges. This will add depth to the path. I'll finish them behind the scene not to waste your time. I've got this path. Let's now adjust the line. I'll set the stroke width to 27. You can adjust it in this panel. You can as well go to Stroke and set the necessary value in the Stroke Width parameter. Set the Line Join and Line Cap parameters to round for rounding the edges and sharp bends. Go to the Taper tab. I'll remind you that this feature has been added in After Effects 2020, and if you have an earlier version of the program, you can use the 3D Stroke plugin. Let's go back to the settings of the path, set the start length to 100%, then add the Trim Path modifier. Trim the line using the end parameter, approximately like this, and animate the offset parameter. In my case, the line animation is 12 frames long, so I'll cut the layer straight away. Set a keyframe on the offset parameter. The line should travel all the way, so this value will be close to 300. If you want to change the length of the trail when it appears, animate the end parameter. Adjust the animation. Let's see what we've got. Let's get down to the galaxy. For convenience, I'll keep the layer with the circle and the line in the solo mode. Apply the CC smear effect to the circle. This effect has two points around which the distortion is created. It also allows you to adjust the strength and radius of the distortion. Go to the frame in which the line will distort the circle. Place both points of the effect on the edge of the circle where the distortion will occur. When the control points have equal coordinates, no distortion occurs. So these positions of the points will be applied to the beginning and the end of the animation. Animate the two parameter to change the shape of the circle. Increase the distortion radius up to 125. Copy the first frame and paste it to the end of the animation. Now, using the Motion Tool script, apply the fading oscillations. The main thing here is to make sure that the last frame is linear, 
otherwise, the fading oscillations won't work. Great, let's move on. Find the frame in which the line should again distort the circle. Duplicate the effect, adjust the points and the moment of distortion. Also, we need to offset the keyframes by one or several frames forward to correctly position the animation. Set the two point. For the first and last keyframe, we can copy the values of the from points to set them manually. Great! Let's move on. Duplicate the effect, offset the keyframes and adjust the points. The remaining distortions are created in the same way, so I'll create them behind the scenes. Ok, I've added the distortions and let's see what we've got. Great, it looks pretty nice but lacks dynamics. Let's add the turbulent displace effect and using it create the jittering during the distortions. I set the size parameter to 80. Animate amount from 0 to 10 and back. Also, animate the evolution parameter. I set the number of turns to 3. Apply easing. For the evolution graph, I'll adjust the graph like this. Let's see what we've got. To clearly see what this effect does, I'll turn the distortions off. Let's now see what this looks like when put together. Go to the layer with the stars and apply the set mate effect to it to mask it out with the circle. Choose the circle layer in the effect settings. The stars are now trimmed by the circle. Let's now apply the effects to them. Select the circle layer, go to the frame in which the distortions begin. Copy all the effects of the layer and paste them to the stars layer. As you might have noticed, the stars get a little blurry during distortions. So let's apply the levels effect. We use it to remove the distortions. Set the mode to alpha and adjust it with the histogram trying to preserve the initial size of the particles. Great, let's move on. Enhance the animation during distortions. Add an adjustment layer and apply the transform effect to it. And apply the wiggle expression to the position parameter. I set frequency to 10 and amplitude to 3. Superb! The animation looks more expressive now. Let's go back to the stars. We haven't created the revealing animation for them, and they are static now. Apply the optics compensation effect to it. By changing the value of the field of view parameter, the stars are gathered in the center. So let's turn on reserve to spread everything relative to the center. Let's examine how it works using a simpler shape. By default, increasing the field of view parameter, the effect compensates for the picture by squeezing the edges of the picture to the center of the composition. By turning on reverse, it will spread them from the center. Let's go back to the stars. Animate the field of view parameter.
Now place the effect above the layer so the set made applies also to it. Great, we've created the distortion effect for the galaxy. And that's about it. In the next lesson, we'll cover how the speed lines are created at the moment of disappearance of the logo. You can download this project at the link in the description. And if you want to learn more about creating logos, enroll in the Logo Animation in After Effects course. See you soon!